Let's we'll get a button started. Up the throne podcast. Ready in three, two. Main camera's here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to get the wrong camera? <laughs> no, you do. I swear. Okay, I got to sit like right there. Pull the north. You're, you're starting off. <laughs> okay, count down again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lab of the Thrones podcast. Ready in three, two. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. Hey everyone, it's Michael from Fire and Brilliance, and obviously... This is Sid from Fire and Brilliance. <laughs> Today's episode is like so, so exciting, right? So um, Sid and I were big fans of Game of Thrones, so full disclosure, before you watch this episode, we are no way, uh, you know, endorsed by them. We're not getting any kind of money from them or even, you know anything at all so we're not related to game of thrones but we're just a big fan of theirs uh so we wanted to actually create a really fun episode here in the podcast called glam of thrones called glam of thrones you're welcome glam of thrones. That's you're welcome for all these clever names at fire and brilliant bad, 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 bad. <laughs> uh, anyway so we we looked up about uh you know we actually the the one thing that actually blew my mind away said is that well, we're looking because you know how much money uh, they invest into their uh, whole production, right? Yes. Uh, so when I was actually, and you and I, and the rest of the staff here was actually looking for jewelry pieces that they're wearing, it, it, it kind of blew my mind that there weren't many to actually look at. I yeah. don't care right? about that. So I I'm, would say so. The costume design is so phenomenal, though, that that's what sets the mood. That's what I'm saying. You know, so the, the costume to the, <clears throat> uh, the setting, to the scenes, to the graphics, to the everything is the production is just so great so I thought you know for some reason I thought okay yeah we should be able to find a few spectacular pieces that they wear but it was really hard to find anything to even talk about but then the three that we did find is actually very significant pieces so another full disclosure there may be spoilers so if you haven't watched it you intend to watch it you can turn this thing off and not watch this podcast because we may spoil a few scenes okay we found a handful um, mm -hmm. of the handful we chose a necklace a brooch and another necklace and so I hope you guys are excited these are things uh, featuring probably scenes that have already happened so um, these spoiler alerts would only be on I would say fan theories of things fan theories and the symbolism behind yes. some of the, these pieces of jewelry uh, in terms of how it's relevant to the actual show yes right so so please don't come for us we are really just celebrating any and all you know thoughts about all of these pieces that are going to be showing off today. Exactly. Okay, let's start. All right, let's start. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one we have here is Melisandre's ruby necklace um, that is as shape-shifting as she is in the show. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like what we see in our, you know, our pendants on our bracelets. They are very malle malleable. They move along with you. Um, and this is a, a hexagonal uh, shaped, I would say, uh, necklace in general like they are hexagons next to each other all the way around with uh there being a ruby uh in the middle what looks like a ruby anyway mm -hmm. but some may classify as dragon glass for keeping her so youthful Ooh, for years. dragon glass oh must be dragon glass dragon glass the most is called obsidian i know and that may be the secret to you know winter coming and all <laughs> now, some, some of the material that they explain or, or that's being used, well, obviously this stuff is not real, but uh, in the show, in terms of dragon glass and Valerian steel, imagine if that is actually real in real life. Wouldn't that be so awesome if we could, Fire Emblems could actually make jewelry made of, like, Valerian steel? I mean, that would be amazing! Fire and dragon glass. Fire and dragon glass. That's our new name. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally make, you know, men's wedding bands made of Valerian steel. That would be so awesome. It's like you're wearing it, and then you could also use it to fight evil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really not far off from things that are right. being made in this day and age with, like, magic mm -hmm. and the occult. You know, people really like uh, diving into the world of crystals these days. So it's right. really not far off from, from that. That's true. I mean, I guess we could call anything... We would brand anything, right? I mean, we could make it. Uh, we could mix platinum with a different type of metal, and then call it Valerian steel, right? I mean, it's platinum, like, yeah. and platinum. Steel. But now winter is truly coming, and in the winter, 
We must protect uh, you. Oh, okay. Let's right. not move on because mm -hmm. I want your thoughts on this. Uh, is that uh, a lab grown? <laughs> lab grown <laughs> ruby in there? Do you see? Well, is that how they paid off their debt? Everyone knows a Lannister <laughs> always pays his debts. Well, I don't know. I mean, you gotta ask King of the North, right? I mean, you gotta King ask of King, the North. You gotta ask King of the North and send the message <laughs> an, an north of the wall. Uh, to make sure that we get uh, get that kind of information because lab created. I'm not sure if during those days or is it is it past, present, or future? I wouldn't even know. So where is this? I mean, it's really not real. Their lab was blacksmithing. Yes, but if I was to put a timestamp on Game of Thrones, it would be during the medieval times. That would be the fantasy very, the closest. world of the medieval times. Yes, and, yes. Right. Inspired. Mm -hmm. Right, but with. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil too much. <laughs> yeah, for um, but yes, I mean, if, if it, anything, it's natural dragon glass, and let's leave it there. But maybe there would be lab-grown dragon glass if there's not enough of it. <laughs> that's true. And they are scraping Just, by. You know? When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. Um. So that being said, let's move on to. This is my favorite piece out of the okay. three. Okay, yeah. so I, I know that you didn't get to ask that question yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Because it's wearable for you, right? Yes, it's a, it's a brooch, right? It's Hand of the King, right? So this is a big symbolic piece of jewelry or a brooch uh, that is a... If you watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of symbolism behind this because this is the person that's supposed to protect the king, uh, whoever is in the, the, the protector of the seven kingdoms, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this is a big role. Uh, the person that wears this is the protector of all seven kingdoms or the protector of the king of all seven kingdoms to ensure that um, they will sacrifice their life or do everything they can in their power to make sure that the kingdom is in safe hands. So that's why it's called Hand of the King. If I, if I had to make a guess... Uh, by looking at it, it looks like it's made of brass, right? Uh, it's kind of has a rustic look to it. Okay. Uh, it has a very, you know, but or it could also be really dirty gold. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's beautiful. I really like the design. It's really just the shape of a hand. You can even see the way they designed it. It looks like there's little nerves on the hand. Right. Uh, so it's very realistic with a ring that goes around it and a big um, dagger light. Uh, pointy dagger in between the hand uh, to really symbolize that hey you know don't mess with the king because I, I will protect him or her. It's a very gender neutral piece just because it looks so substantial. Right. That like typically brooches they're you know heirloom pieces they've mm -hmm. been handed down from grandmother to, to mm -hmm. grandchild over the years and things like that and usually they're worn by woman mm -hmm. but this makes it pretty much unisex. Absolutely. And you said that you'd wear it yourself. I am not a type of person that would wear a brooch normally unless I'm okay. going to a really fancy event. But if I had You're gonna this role play. Piece, yes. I mean, this is <laughs> this is some symbolism behind it because I'm such a big fan of, of talking Game with of Thrones, your hands. Oh. And I yeah, yeah, I do. I do talk with my hands. Like, I'm like, I can't control myself, right? But um but yes, I mean, I'm, I'm such a big fan of the show and if someone people that know me, they know that I don't watch TV that much. I really do not watch. I don't follow many episodes, or I'm, I'm just not that big into watching television. Coming from the person that assigned all of us at the company to do a binge watching of of Game of Thrones all the way until the recent episodes that were coming out. So, right, just saying. <laughs> Mind you, I've been watching this from day one, so I had to wait every single week. I, I oh, that's binge, agonizing. I could not binge watch even if I wanted to because I watched this from way from the beginning, right? So, yeah. uh, and I still enjoy it every single week and I think it's worth the time. So, if you, if you have, are not read. in Game of Thrones, again, we're not being sponsored, but if you haven't watched it already, you should watch it. It's a really good show. It's a really good show. So, that's when you know that you genuinely like something is yeah. that you're not sponsored. We're just fans. We're, we're <laughs> big fans. And, uh, so going back to the brooch here, if I had this, I would definitely wear it. It, it, it. And if I am given the opportunity, I would love to make this in like yellow gold. I and mean, that would be that would be awesome. Yeah. 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 It would be nice. Would but, you make it look rustic looking or would it be like nice and yes, polished? Yes, I'll make it look exactly like that. Ooh. Right? So it would be, yeah. Very, Is there like, what kind of finish like is on that? Like a matte finish almost. A matte finish? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like it myself. All right. So third is Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys Targaryen. Really awesome looking, I would say, cusp 
of a dragon necklace. And she is mother of dragons after all. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think that's made of right there? It wraps and encompasses around her neck, but not so much as like a what you would call a choker these days. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's kind of like a modern day headphones. <laughs> I mean, if they made that and made it as functional as headphones, that would be pretty cool, too. That would be pretty cool. Just by looking at it, it looks like it's made of stainless steel. Uh, but if I'm in their world, it would most likely be made of Valerian steel. If I went to a steampunk, you know, themed party or anything like that, this is exactly what I would rock with a really nice dress. Right. And the the overall... Uh, so so when I think about dragons, right, there are two types of dragons in my mind that I think about. There's the, the western dragon and there's the eastern dragon. They look okay. completely different. The western dragon has a dragon face, but, uh, you know, with a body that's a little more plump. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, with, where the eastern dragon looks more like a snake with mm-hmm. with with wings, and it flies with a very angry face. Right, slender. so very slender. So this looks more like the eastern dragons around the neck. Right. Um, so I, I am naturally drawn to this because it has that that overall look of uh, uh, more or less of the the eastern dragon look, which is what I'm a little used to or accustomed to. But uh, the way they designed it, there's so much detail into it. As you can see, the eyebrows and the hair from the head. The scales. Uh, the scales along the neck all the way down to the bottom of the body with the wings. Right. Uh, with it looks like a flower with leaves. Yeah. If, it's, if we're thinking about versatility. It's, it's very well designed. I, I honestly don't even know how she was able to put it around her neck. Like, how does that even work? Right. Well, so maybe malleable is just like the, yeah, the other one, like shape-shifting. Be. Right. Um, because uh, there are certain necklaces these days where they clasp a certain way that they're right. hidden. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you can bend it just enough so that your neck can fit through and then kind of hug it around you. I'm not really sure. Um, the only thing is that, you know, right at the, um, the head of the dragon, it looks very pointy where the, you know, the eyebrows flare back and all that. So it looks yes. like if you're wearing this piece, you should keep your neck up high <laughs> because you might I get I think poked. if you're royalty, you generally do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're we royalty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't relate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but but uh, go ahead. Going off of what you said, this is just so great. I feel like you can you can play it up more if you wanted to, or you can play it down a little bit more. Um, but in either sense, it's just uh, I would wear it myself. This is my favorite. Oh, absolutely. I, I like them all. I like all three. And I and just to emphasize my point on this show, there's just the the producer has provided or or put in so much detail, attention to detail in every single part of the show, uh, from the storyline uh, to the production to the setting, even to the jewelry. It's so detailed, right? right. So uh, from the brooch with the nerves on the hands, from the dragon with the just the of the to the scales. I mean, you can really. Um, appreciate, uh, if you will, appreciate how much time and effort and energy uh, that they wanted to make sure that this is uh, going to be the show of the decade, if you will. Uh, I think if any jewelry pieces or any like accented pieces were shown in the show at all, I feel like there's enough subtlety in it that you catch on and you're like, oh my gosh, I need that. Or, oh my gosh, that looks so great. Um, And the fact that it's Dragon for Mother of Dragons is is just, um, it's an Easter egg. (laughs) <laughs> that uh, that people kind of like tune into and they're like, oh, why did she, you know, what does that symbolize? Does it, does it symbolize, you know, her um, reigning of thrones right. uh, later on in the show? Or mm-hmm. or or does it mean that there's going to be more to come about this in, in her own storyline? Mm-hmm. Um, and that goes for all of these, right? Hand of the King. Um, That's right. Melisandre's Necklace. That's right. And we're both a fan of Red, okay? And, and uh, so... Out of all of these three, I would say mine is mine. Mine would be the uh, the necklace for uh, the the dragon necklace for Mother of Dragons. For Daenerys, yes. Right, and um, uh, mine would be the brooch. And I I can't say which character's on because um, again, spoiler, it, it does move around to yes. different people <laughs> within yes. the show. Uh, I mean, the, Mother the of Dragons of that just makes sense. Yeah, Mother of Dragons there is <laughs> one, right? So anyway, yeah. <laughs> is there one? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So there you go. I mean, um, 
if there is another piece of jewelry from Game of Thrones and if you've been following, you know exactly how exciting it is to watch the season finale uh, or the, the, the last season, if you will. Uh, so if there's another piece of jewelry that we missed, you know, let us know, right? If, especially if you're into jewelry, you might actually catch it. So uh, if there's a piece of jewelry that we missed, leave a comment below, hit the like button if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, uh, and then hit the notification bell so that you will be notified each and every time we create a new podcast, Gemini Showcase. Uh, so that you can watch it right away. Uh, this is a very fun topic. Obviously, this really just has nothing to do with um, what well, we do here as a business, but it was more or less to really talk about the jewelry in a show that we're big fans of, and I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, thanks, and tune in again next time. Goodbye. All right, bye.